Hello everybody, I am Nea and welcome back to this channel, Aradia Alchemy. In today's video, I want to talk about the most important tip for baby witches and beginner practitioners. Of course, like I said in my video, how to become a witch, I said that witchcraft, at least in my opinion, is a spiritual journey and is a journey of communion with the energies that are magical within yourself as well as the energies of the universe and beyond. And and there are many already very interesting videos about tips and tricks you know, for beginner witches, but I feel that this tip is the most important out of all of them, or maybe they didn't even mention it, I don't know. But this is the most important according to my belief system and my practice. As you guys know, I'm a natural born witch and I have been raised in a family from my mother's side of witches. But even though I moved away from the tradition, I still think that this practice is supremely important. And I am talking actually two practices that can be, you know, joined together very easily. And they are the path of devotion or devotion and grounding. These are the most important tips in order to become an effective witch. Because as we know, witchcraft is a spiritual journey that connects to the harmonious oneness out outside and within ourselves. Even the ancient Egyptian used to know about that oh, everything is connected. They used to know about this. Therefore, when we practice daily devotion to the universe, we are consciously raising our vibration and we are making an effort to, to make a daily energetic practice. Because even though, of course, this is not mandatory and I know that each and every one of you guys are busy with their own life, but what you have to understand about energy work, which translates into witchcraft to a certain extent, is that practice the awareness of your energy and practicing, focusing, and redirecting your energy into your outcomes and desire, it's more important than having a pentacle or having tools or ceremonial magic because the tools are nothing without you. You are your own sacred space. You are the energy. I even said it in my Patreon. I did a video dedicated about the sacred space and how to build it. And in the video, I explained how it's not really important to really do a physical circle, but what is important is to do it with your energy in order to be protected. And the same tip is in this video as well when it comes down to the most important tips for baby witches. You must attune yourself to the energy of the universe as well as within yourself. And practicing daily devotion does help you doing that. Now, when it comes down to devotion, devotion is something that is found in every religion and in every spiritual practice. So that will depend on you, the witch. That will depend on your practice, what you want to do. In my example, I have a protector of my home, which is the mother goddess. And I have a statue in my altar and I do daily devotion to that statue. I give offerings, especially once a month, of milk, flour, water, and whatnot, and jewelry. And that is also a daily practice. But for instance, if you do not want to follow any pantheon of gods or deity, or perhaps you are an atheist witch that just wants to connect with the energies of the universe, I want you to know, guys, that daily devotion is possible nevertheless. And you can do it with the elements, air, fire, water, and earth. You can do it with the energies of the cosmos and the star. You can do daily devotion to the water for witches who are sea witches. And if you want to know what type of witch you are, I'm going to leave the link over here so you can check out my video, what type of witch you are. So you can do it with anything that you find a resonance with. But why then devotion is so connected to grounding? Because in my personal and humble opinion, the most effective devotion is the one with mother nature. Because everything that we experience in terms of spells and energy work, like I said in my previous videos, we do borrow these energies from mother earth. And so practicing gratitude towards mother earth and grounding into the room of creation to this beautiful mother is a form of practicing devotion and at the same time is also a practice of grounding. Many times I do see here on YouTube or even in other places, which is the digest 
cut the trees, not cut the trees, but they cut the plant without like, they, they're so harsh when they do it. And I'm like, oh, my heart just wants to sink. And this is because probably they do not practice devotion on a day-to-day -day basis or at least once a week. When you're dealing, for example, as a kitchen witch or a green witch, and you're dealing with the energies of the herbs before you even cut a rose or you cut a tree, uh, an entire tree will be difficult. <laughs> I don't know why I'm obsessed with the tree, but you cut anything like a flower, an herb, anything that you're working with, you want to commune with that plant. You want to commune with mother nature. You want to say, thank you so much, mother goddess. Thank you for the God for giving me and borrowing this energy. And you will see that later on, if you will utilize the same flower, plant, rock, whatever it is that you're borrowing physically or energetically from nature, this spell will work 10 times more because everything revolves around energy and holds information. And these are living beings, even though they don't speak our language. So practicing this devotion towards Mother Earth not only is a protection at large, but it raises your vibration and it makes you a more strong practitioner. And in my opinion, this is the most important tip for beginner witches because before you even go into invoking deities, which is not devotion, it's evocation or invocation of deities or spells or correspondences, you want to work within your own existing energy field as well as auric field, which I talk about in my e-course, co-creating your own reality and how you can improve this practice of devotion. First of all, as an exercise that I want to give you guys, you can write five or three. I usually do three because five is a bit too much, but you can write five or three devotional practices in your book of shadows or in a piece of paper that do resonate with you. For instance, for a while I have been doing daily devotion to water and I have been manifesting with the energy of water. Does that mean that I always have to be in front of a river or in front of the ocean? That will be great, but not necessarily. You can do it with a bath. You can do it with the water that you drink. And this is something that I learned from my father in a very quirky way. But every time that he was drinking water, he was like, uh, he is actually still nowadays. He's like, oh, thank you, water. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a very simple for him, a very unconscious devotional practice to water. And you will see that the water that will go inside you will become you and will thank you from the inside as well as raising your vibration. And this is just a simple example. So write down five or three devotional practices that resonate with you. For some others of you, it could be walking around nature and meditating and soaking up the energies of the park, of the trees and the leaves, or maybe imagining your feet in your home or even from your bed, root themselves into the ground while you center yourself with your energy. You're bringing forth the energies of the earth as well as your soul. That could be a devotional practice. For some others of you instead who are more connected perhaps to deities, it could be offerings to an altar, offering to a tiny statue, you of a god or a goddess that you prefer and that will be your devotion but devotional practices which in hinduism if i'm correct is also called the pact of bhakti yoga is extremely important because it grounds you it centers your energy and it allows you to understand your energy at large as well as the energies of the universe listen you cannot practice any advanced spell in my humble opinion of course or any beginner spell if you do not understand the way energy moves throughout your body and outside of you because all that you're doing you are borrowing and transforming energy as a witch and as a healer we can see that even in the practices of reiki what they're doing they are working with that existing energy through their hands and they're transforming it in order to heal blockages or sometimes even diseases in people. That's exactly what witches do with their spell. They know and they are aware of their field of energy and they know how to transform it and mold it in order to arrive 
to a certain outcome, which remembers, in my humble opinion, has to be in alignment with your soul as well as in harmony with the universe at large, which pretty much translate into don't do what you want as long as you don't harm anyone, which is also part of the Rede in the Wiccan tradition. Now, path of devotion is really important on a day-to-day -day basis as well as grounding because once your practice of self-awareness towards your energy gets improved on a day-to-day -day basis because you are practicing devotion then once you will be ready to do spell you will feel the energies that you're working with you will feel the energy of the herbs that you're using you will feel the energy coming up from the candles you will feel grounded so you don't get any um balances doing some practices that can require more energy and it's a day-to-day -day awareness also of your spiritual path because yet again I do see witchcraft as a spiritual journey and not just something that you just use once in a while to manifest or use a spell to attract prosperity of love of course I make spells like this and of course you can use them but let's use them with awareness and in order to improve ourselves as well as the world if possible with our own small capacity I guess so you can also I have another exercise or tip for you in the practice of devotion if you want to work with the elements you can use air fire earth or water and for example if you have a terrace that will be great or a garden or somewhere secluded you could go and point each and every individual uh, elements from east uh, west, south, and node, and do a devotion in the cardinal points. You can find that through a compass, even through your phone. And in each and every one of the cardinal points, you're giving devotion to. And that's a wonderful practice to honor the energies of this universe at large, as well as Mother Earth, especially, like I said, if you do not want to work perhaps with a pantheon of deity or a protector god or goddesses, which I can talk about in a different video. If you do not have a terrace or perhaps you cannot go outside, don't worry about it. You can practice devotion even by holding some of your favorite crystals. As long as you do it at least once a day or three times will be better. Some witches actually do devotion five times a day. So you can hold a crystal and feel the energy of this crystal. What type of information? This is a beautiful raw aquamarine. What type of beautiful information this crystal is giving to you? And cherishing this moment and giving thank you and thanks while you're grounding yourself at the same time. You could do it just again by a walk in the park and meditating internally. And remember that I do believe that practicing by yourself can be sometimes or actually most of the time most powerful because uh, of course practicing in a coven can be beautiful with other people but sometimes when it comes down to raising your level of energy and working in your your spiritual path you want to have those time by yourself when you're doing these practices of devotion so you can understand the beautiful alchemy of existence and how much we are all connected and how much your energy this is so important for baby witches your energy the energy that you're asking to the universe for making the spell come true is actually coming from everything around you Okay, you guys, so this for me is the one most important tip in order to become a better witch, I guess, or a better human being and to practice witchcraft as a spiritual journey and a spiritual path. Let me know in the comment section down below if this video was helpful for you guys and other videos that you want to see over here on this channel. And especially let me know if you are a baby witch or a beginner practitioner, because I always love to hear your stories. Subscribe on this channel to have more videos videos about spirituality, self-development, and witchcraft or alchemy at large. And I see you guys later in another of my videos. Bye!